Welcome everybody. Let's talk about razors and brushes. No, wait a minute. That's not right. It's time for us to talk about razors and brushes. Really? Come on. Let's talk about razors and brushes. So this past weekend, we had our first Majestic Shaving Company sales event. And it was really great. People came by, we got to talk to them. What did they need? What did they want to learn? And it helped me to realize that I live in a very strange bubble because I live in a world where I watch a lot of YouTube videos about people talking about shaving, talking about blade gap and lofts and brushes. And that's not something that the average person when they're starting out needs to know about. So. This video is all about how can we take care of our gear and some basics when it comes to things like a safety razor and a shaving brush. When it comes to loading your safety razor, you're gonna to wanna to take the cap, line up the nubs there, the posts I should say, with the blade, just drops in. You add your plate. And then you screw it in and that pretty much works for all three piece razors and your razor is pretty much good to go. Now your brush could be a little bit different. The reason why your brush can be a little bit different is that you might have a natural brush like this, which is horsehair. <laughs> or you might have a synthetic brush such as this one, which comes from Crown King. It's really very easy to get your shave brush ready for your shave. You're just gonna want something to put some water in. In this case, I've got a simple mug. It's nothing special, it's not an antique, it's not a scuttle, other than the fact that it claims to have an outstanding recipe for homemade chili, which I can't verify because I've never used it for that. But you're just gonna put some water in here. Now, the temperature of the water really depends on you. I actually like a cold water shave, so I just use it right out of the tap but a lot of people prefer warm water. Don't go hot because you don't want to damage your shave brush, but you might have warm to very warm water in your mug if that's what you prefer. So you put that inside of your mug. Now if you have a natural hair brush like horse, what you're gonna to need to do is put it inside that mug and leave it there for at least five minutes, maybe even 10. So you can do this while you're in the shower or maybe while you're drinking your cup of coffee and the natural hair needs that to soften up and to absorb the water. However, if you have a synthetic hairbrush like this Crown King, it doesn't need to be pre-soaked at all, but you might just throw it in there and let it get wet while you're washing your face or while you're putting your blade inside of your razor. But again, a synthetic brush does not need to be soaked, so that's a difference. What about the soap? I've got my canister here of CAD from Phoenix Shaving. Can't go wrong with this one. Actually, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, the entire name. It's just a can't miss barbershop scent. It's an easy go-to. It's not a particularly hard soap, but this applies to any of the soaps that you might use. Okay, this is where we're gonna get controversial. We're gonna talk about blooming soap. There are a number of people who really like to bloom the soap, which all that refers to is adding some warm water to the top of the soap, not a lot, and letting that warm water soften up the upper layer of the soap and also release some of the essential oils which have the scent inside of it. I don't bloom my soap, but I do put some room temperature water on top to lighten up that top layer. I think it's worth doing. This is our synthetic, so we just got it wet. We didn't need to soak it. And we've got our soap, which I like to add just a little bit of water to, and then that top side is wet. Now to load the brush, just some gentle circles. That's all it takes. And it doesn't take long, particularly in these high quality soaps. It doesn't need to get a ton of soap to load up on those bristles. Even something like this, it's probably good enough for a two or three pass shave. And you're ready to move on. I've also loaded up the horsehair brush with uh, some of my shave soap. One thing that I neglected to mention, I apologize. Usually after you soak the brush, you wanna shake it out just a little bit to get rid of some of that excess moisture. It's better to start with the soap a little bit dry than it is too wet. If 
If it's too wet, you kind of get a runny lather. What you can do is you just swirl your brush inside the mug and it's going to start generating some lather right inside the mug. Wow, that's really annoying. I didn't have a lot of lather on that brush to start with, but you can see that I have definitely begun to make some lather inside of my mug. And then you can just apply it to your face. This is not my preferred method. What I prefer doing is I actually like to take the brush with the soap and I actually like to apply it to my face and build the lather right on my face. It's called face lathering. I like the feel of the brush. I feel like it kind of is stimulating the skin. It's lifting the hairs up. It's exfoliating things. And my personal preference is face lathering. It's gonna look something like this. When it comes to face lathering, there aren't any hard and fast rules about it. Some people go up and down, some people go side to side. Circles is very popular. I've even seen, I believe it's Geo Fat Boy, does almost the infinity symbol to make sure he gets good coverage. But again, that's up to you whether you want a bowl lather or face lather. What do you do with your brush at the end of your shave? Usually at the end of your shave, you're gonna have some lather left probably more than you realize. So what you wanna do is make sure that lather gets out. Let's see how we can do that. At the end of my shave, I've typically got a lot of lather left, as you can see there. And while I really enjoy that lather, I don't particularly want it left in my brush. Get along these top bristles here, and there we go. A gentle squeeze. Now synthetic doesn't really require quite as much care I'm gonna dry it off. I may set it on the counter inside of a shave stand. I'm going to pass it along the towel a few times. And then what I prefer to do with my horse hair is I do prefer to hang it from the stand. You've got your brush taken care of, but what about your razor? Well, it does need a little bit of care. Some people like to take it apart and make sure that all the individual pieces are dry. They'll even kind of flick the blade along a towel just to make sure that everything is dry and there's no moisture in there. Because even a stainless steel razor can eventually get some rust. However, that's not always necessary. I live in a pretty dry climate and not a lot of humidity. And for a long time, I would just dry my razor and set it aside and be ready for the next day's shave. So if you wanna be doubly safe, you can go through the process of taking it apart, drying it off, putting it back together, or if you have the opportunity you can just leave it out on the towel or on the counter to dry for a while. But uh, either way, you're probably going to be okay with your razor. They're chrome plated, most of them. I don't want to neglect talking about the soap. The soap doesn't need a whole lot. But I think we've all seen what happens to soap when it's left in water too long. So at the end of my shave, I just take the lid or the cap and I'll invert it and make sure all the water gets out and allow that soap to dry. Well, how does this work for a shower shaver? It might be a little bit different, but the ideas, the principles are the same. You don't wanna leave your shave gear just sitting in water. So those are just some basic tips, how you can take care of your brush, get it going, what to do post-shave, what to do with your razor post-shave, and even your soap, you wanna take that into consideration. But if you take care of these tools of the trade, they're gonna last you a really long time. You know guys, I really feel like we need to talk to the prop department. They just didn't seem to, uh, to be on point today. I don't think we got their A game.